Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Cora. I work for Kubematic, and I also appreciate the chance to uh, talk today. Um, so last month uh, in Hamburg, we had a Container Day Security, and um, as a company, we were supposed to do a workshop. And for that, for that workshop, we decided to um, do a capture the flag session uh, with some attendees. And yeah, I did it for the first time, and I didn't want to um, use some hacking tools to like get some um, secrets or data out of the Kubernetes clusters. So I was like, okay, let's do some um, configuration issues, and then uh, people uh, can just um, access to, to the cluster. And um, well, Q using Kube API server would be too obvious, so I was like, okay, let's uh, use Kubelet. Um, maybe you already know Kubelet has also an API. Um, so this is a recap, you know, all the control plane stuff talks to Kube API server, which talks to uh, etcd as well as Kube proxy, Kubelet, they also talk to API server and um, your kubectl commands also talk to API server as well. Um, however, for some stuff, um, well, um, <coughs> the job of Kubelet is to get the pod specs from etcd. Use, um, through Kube API server, but uh, it also provides the functionality of uh, kubectl logs, kubectl port forward, kubectl exec, which are actually coming from your laptop to Kube API server and to the kubelet, where this um, API is actually used. Um, you may think that, okay, by default, most of the clusters have, uh, so it by default uses port uh, 10,250, um, and you may think that by default, yeah, this, this is, this is um, closed on the firewalls and everything, but even if you uh, check for internet, there are some, maybe not too many, but uh, there are some clusters that are uh, open and um, the, the cubelet can be reached there. Um, fortunately and unfortunately, it doesn't have an API documentation, so it might change over time, so you cannot find actually um, the uh, documentation of it with the um, parameters and everything, but um, you can check the code. And as you see, there are some paths, uh, I mean, like um, endpoints, like a slash ran, slash exec, um, attach, etc. there. And um, now I will show you some scary stuff uh, about this. And um, thank, you. Ah, okay. thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so um, on, on GCP, I. I have one one VM which runs um, a kubeadm cluster, one node kubeadm cluster. If this works, you will see it. Yeah, this this is the IP address of it. And here I am. I have um, I have a pod which actually um, uh, uses a secret DB credentials. So there, there are some user, users and passwords over it. So uh, I will just export the API, so IP address here. And then um, so one of the endpoints um, here is um, the running ports. So I will do a curl. Um, also, another thing is that, of course, for, this, uh, for the sake of this uh, uh, demonstration, I made some changes to the um, Kubelet API, uh, Kubelet. So you see, by default, of course, I mean, you shouldn't have the anonymous enabled and also authorization mode should not be always allow. But yeah, for this, uh, you will see it. So if I do this command, uh, it gets me a list of pods that are running uh, on this node, of course, uh, by the Kubelet. And um, I am actually interested about this volume test pod. As you see, this is the, the name of the pod on, on this namespace, and it has this container. And if I do a curl to, um, I will just copy paste some stuff for the, for easy, yeah. As you see right now, I'm on the default namespace on, on this pod, on this container, I ran this ls minus l command, which shows me the the stuff there. Um, well, okay, you can try it out, but I know where the secrets are. I can do etc, um, uh, what was it? etc config secrets, um, 
password, for example. Yeah, ah, sorry. Secret. Uh. So I get the password. Um, there's even more. Just, so sorry. You can even get the container logs. Yeah. For example, these are the etcd logs. So um, be careful about um, your um, Kubelet configuration and make sure that it's all safe and secure. Thank you very much. Okay.